welcome back to the nerdy news you need to know throughout the week on iHeartRadio and podcast services around the world because I'm returning hoodie. And I'm just still here, Kevin. And you're officially listening to this Monday superhero filled episode of What Kev? Crisis on Infinite Podcast. I'm happy we can see actually see <laughs> just a little Teddy head cam right there. <laughs> Teddy cam, baby. Teddy cam. It's within my cam. It's the same frame. Good job, Bubba. Good job. My cat's not in here, so I don't wish she's. I I want your cat perched right on top of you like a parrot, Kevin. Nah, she'll she'll claw my my, she'll claw my ears off. You may you may hear a few baby screams because my door is open because the cat's not in here, so the cat needs to come back in here. Bathroom. So here's some baby screams. Everything's fine. This is how she talks. No, okay. All right. <laughs> well, we got a jam-packed show for you today because we got two things to talk about. One of them involves two people, Deadpool and Wolverine. And the other, well, both four initials, S, D, and C, and C, San Diego Comic-Con. <laughs> they had a time on Saturday night at SDCC. They had they a had t- a Marvel had a time this weekend. I will tell you that right now. <laughs> but you can see everything we're talking about. So much more by going to hot995.com slash crisis crew. You can stay up to date on that nerdy news you need to know. Also, at infinite underscore pods on your Instagram. Or the X going to give it to you. Where we've been pretty much giving you all the updates you need to know from San Diego Comic Con. Including, Kevin, <laughs> that the Doctor Doom Iron Man Funko Pop. That was kind of a crossover Funko Pop. That was a peg warmer for five bucks. Two hundred fifty dollars now. If you own said Funko Pop, it's it's funny because I I only streamed once last week, and sorry about that. I got okay. insanely busy last week at work. I just didn't have the brain space to do anything. <laughs> I mentioned in the uh, the two of the episodes like there's been a rumor of a certain Iron Avenger maybe come back as a as a Mister Doom, and that could have been an omen to go go stuck up on your Doctor Doom Iron Man mm. <laughs> Funko Pop. Who would have thought? <laughs> Uh, But, Kevin, where can you listening right now, if you listen to the podcast version of our show, uh, watch us record the podcast live or on demand of their own accord? You can watch us live twice a week on twitch.tv slash if underscore pods and join us in the chat. Have a great old time with some nerdy friends of yours. Or you can watch us at your leisure anytime you want. YouTube.com slash if underscore pods. You can actually go all the way back to when we broke the news that Deadpool and Wolverine was going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. fast forward to today and listen... Let's talk about it. Just think if we were right all those years ago, and we probably weren't. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> sometimes we are. Some, some Sometimes we are. But most of the time we're right. There most you go. Um, but we always usually start the podcast with what you're doing. But in lieu of the things we have to talk about today, we are going to punt that to Wednesday slash Thursday's episode, including Hot D. Yes, we know Hot D was on Sunday. But let's face it. Comic-Con and Deadpool and Wolverine took over the weekend. So... Some hot D will take over Wednesday when we talk about that on the podcast instead. Screen that episode uh, at Comic Con over the weekend, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, it's, it's really cool. Comic Con works of like the like they show Deadpool and Wolverine. I know for some audience members, which was cool because then they spoiled uh, the cameos immediately after that screening. So in case you didn't know, you were spoiled and didn't realize it because it was Comic Con news. Um, they show episodes of that I think they did like a like a ten minute like sizzle reel of what we do in the shadows is really cool what happens at San Diego Comic Con I was only spoiled I, was, I got minorly spoiled before I saw the movie but it wasn't a big deal because it was it was Blake Lively we all knew who that was going to be mm, I had no idea I had no idea because we're still in the non-spoiler part of the podcast Kevin. oops my bad my bad <laughs> uh, but we'll be doing all that good stuff on Wednesday so make sure you come on back here but this is the time to see if my buttons work on my little button bar over here because Kevin, it's time for the news. It's time. News. Perfect. Uh, literally spent the past hour and a half trying to make sure all this stuff worked and that it didn't get damaged. And luckily, it did not because of the move. Yeah, those movers can be a little rough sometimes. Yeah. Thankfully, they were gentle on this. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. But it's time to talk about and add another movie. To our MCU in review, let's break down Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, that. There we go. All right, there we go. The break it down button got stuck. That was the one. I had to wake up. I didn't know where it was for a second. Oh, oh, it was like, Hoodie, what are you trying to tee up? Don't worry. It's coming. It'll get there. 
I haven't been to a Marvel review in the forever. I, I, I got to log back in. Well, that's okay. Our, which you, uh, here's the fun part. I guess we can preface this. Uh, if you go to our letterbox, it's actually my letterbox account because let, let's face it, I see more movies sometimes than Kevin does, and it's yeah, an honest review of my thing. Um, especially lately. But we have a list which you can see under Andrew Hoodie on Letterbox. It's a fun time. It is called the Crisis on Infinite Podcast MCU in Review List. Not gonna read every entry because right now we have. 45 entries. This would be the 46th entry in the MCU, including the I Am Groot mini episodes, which we kind of bundled together. Uh, and multiple seasons we've grouped together and helped rank it up, mainly Loki season two. Um, but here is how the top 10 stands in our MCU in review rankings. Keep this in mind, Kevin. Maybe when we're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, Avengers Endgame, number one, obviously makes sense. Infinity War, number two. No Way Home, number three. Okay, another multiverse story right there. Okay. Civil War, Captain America Winter Soldier at five. Black Panther, number six. Guardians one at seven. Thor Ragnarok at eight. Avengers, the first one, at nine. And number 10 for our crisis ranking, Guardians of the Galaxy, volume three, followed by number 11, Wakanda Forever. And I guess our last, latest entry would be Loki season two, which is at 14, which updated where Loki was originally. Where did we put... Um the Marvels of 23. The Marvels we put at 20. So that that's the latest movie we put. So yeah. that's middle ground. Which I was just curious. I couldn't remember where you put it. Like, uh, Echoes there, there too, I guess, is also the latest one. That's at 30, which is also b- bottom middle of the pack, if you want to say that. Echo got nominated for some Emmys. you see that? It did. I feel like that's just like it's a gimme for every show. It's like, all right, you came out. Here's some gimme. We're going to nominate you for something. I mean, Figure it's out a category you can fit into. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the fun part is if Teddy being in the camera now, you get to see how much he itches. And Kat, Teddy, you need to stop right now, boy. Yeah, you that, that, that's why we have cat cam off sometimes because the itching. Yeah, itching it is not. I'm just gonna uh, keep my. I'm gonna keep my arm up here so you can see Teddy <laughs> itching the whole time. Don't worry about it. Uh, but Kevin, let's get on to the non-spoiler parts of this. Did you like Deadpool and Wolverine? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I had to be the bearer of bad news, but I love this movie. I'm just joking. <laughs> I thought it was great. It was, it was a fun time. Definitely an up because um, there there was like this. I want to say annoying, but Deadpool two I don't think delivered as much as people wanted it to, wanted mm-hmm. to do. We all saw Deadpool one. Mm-hmm. This one I think overachieved mm-hmm. at, at certain points in the movie. It was the only, the only thing I could, I could knock it on. I could say if I want to knock it on something, I wish we could have explored more of Wolverine's timeline and what what actually happened. I have to yeah, because it. it kind of was inferred more than anything. Yeah. yeah. But that's just me, because I, because uh, unlike everybody else, I love multiversal stuff. Because uh, I'm a very existential thinker. Mm-hmm. I want to think about about you know the person in Earth Four who went left to the right. I went right. Maybe he went left and see what happened with him. Mm-hmm. So, but but other than that, I love. I thought it was a great movie. Uh, I did not see that opening coming at all. I thought that was great. <laughs> Yes, and uh, I thought the opening was was fun, but also three D, a little too three D at times. You know, like was this? Should I have gone seen this in three D when you're sitting in the theater? I almost bought forty X ticket. Oh, I thought at Regal, I almost did, but I was like, is it going to be as good as Twister? Probably not. Probably, Probably not. Not, worth the not for four D. Not worth the four D <laughs> money right there. That price tag. Um, and Kevin, if you were to give it a score out of ten, we'll say uh, Baby Blades. Baby, baby knives. There we go. What would you give it? Eight. Eight solid baby knives out of ten baby knives. If you haven't seen the movie, you'll get that reference, which is why we do the non-spoiler part of this podcast. So you can then hear what we think about it and then go watch it and then come back as we break it down. Baby knife. Baby knives. Um, I think for me, I really liked it. It was fun because I went to see it with Eric and Max and, of course, obviously Mora, uh, my wife. You saw it twice. So I've seen it once. I okay. would like to see it twice. Uh, there too. might be plans in the motions. I might see it with Brother John when I'm down in Virginia Beach next week. Awesome. Fun fact, Kevin, I will not be here for next Monday's episode because I will be in Virginia Beach. Sheds up. No problem. <laughs> All right. Another solo episode. Maybe we'll play some college football this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it, was, it. I think the movie definitely is is kind of the, the tagline I've been saying for the movie is if you are a Marvel insider, if you listen to this podcast, or you're us, or you, you, you deep dive on all the Comic-Con news, this movie, 100% for you. If you're a casual fan, who maybe your last movie you saw was Endgame or Spider-Man, haven't kept up with all Disney Plus shows, I mean, the Fox stuff in the past, this movie, you like it, but not as much as the Marvel insider. 
I can see what you're saying. Like that, because Marvel insiders and then other people like us who like know what comic stories they're referencing. Mm-hmm. So like knowing like when they did the um the, Wolver- the um the Wolverine montage of different Wolverines, mm-hmm. you know what each Wolverine was. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can definitely see like if, if if you have been following this stuff like me since you were you were eight, it definitely hits a li- little different than than person that just maybe just saw Deadpool. You know, whatever it came out 10 years ago. Yeah, and you're not keeping up with, oh, they have a friendship in the comics and all this stuff, which was fun because a lot of people were like, what are all these things that reference? I'm like, oh, don't worry. We, we got you. We can listen to the podcast, please, and they'll tell you. Um, but I didn't. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun time. I think it isn't necessarily the savior of the MCU, but it is kind of, uh, I've, I've, I've liked what people have been saying, an adrenaline boost uh, into the yeah. MCU, which is what surely is needed because kind of, stagnated a little bit you know loki was kind of our last like oh real good and then you know we've had secret invasion the marvels kind of underperformed echo was there um but you know kind of last guardians was good um but kind of the end of last year kind of faltered a little bit and now this is like all right hey we're still here and then comic-con news obviously helped on top of that too well you even look at that top 10 um our, our top um, marvel movie list of the last few movies the best two have been um, Guardians and Wakanda Forever, but like I always say, Wakanda Forever, you don't leave Wakanda Forever feeling good about yourself. Yeah, and it's, I think it's a, it's a long funeral. At day. the same time, too, those are yeah, like those are both ending movies. Kind of Guardians yeah. Three being the last Guardians with James Gunn and Wakanda Forever, for now being more more the farewell to Chadwick more than anything. Yeah, mm. this movie you left feeling pretty. I mean, I, the the Marvels you left feeling pretty good too, but the Marvels there's a whole. It could be a, a freaking college course about why that movie failed because it's so many reasons besides just that it wasn't the best ever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so many but this movie literally, literally it kind of got you. It was, all, it was also in its own way an, an homage to all the Fox movies as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I didn't really expect. I thought it was going to be more of um, let's just take Deadpool and put him in our uh, MCU world. But it was more like we're going to we're going to put him there eventually. But let's say goodbye and thanks to the X Men's and the Fantastic Fours and the Daredevils and all that kind of stuff like. We know you didn't do great, and you're not widely, widely, widely loved, but you were there, and we love you, and thank yes. you. For, uh, for and you're like, did. oh, this is with Fox property. I get it. I forgot that was a Fox property, and some of these cameo things that may have happened or may not have happened. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I, still, I, all in all, a great ride. Yeah, I do think, sorry, I, I just have like thoughts. I, I literally have like lines I wrote down was that the cameos in this aren't really necessarily cameos where they happen and they're gone. They're, they're there for multiple scenes, which is great, Yeah. because um, I think it really... This movie is a cameo fest, but is in a good way. Instead of just being like, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. It has a story, and it uses those cameos to those stories. Cameos serve a purpose, and not mm-hmm. just like a, um, not like, not, not like that, um, the scene in, uh, <laughs> it, um, not something, something, something dark. Multiverse side. of Madness. The, 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 the last family guy, mm-hmm. Star Wars, um, throw, and I'm hating Christensen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I no cameo like that. I think comparing <laughs> this to Multiverse of Madness, that's what your more cameo fest is, where it is literally a scene of here's all the cameos, and then all the cameos are dead. This is the cameos die, but you know, they had like three or four scenes before and some dialogue back and forth between things. Well, we're not. Sure if- Four of them died. Maybe. So, well, three of them. Come. Three of them were like, "We have another three. We saw the one yeah. out of that four, but not the other the three. one. Mm. But we're not sure what other. Three. Mm. We never know. We never um, know. Um, and if I were to give it a ten, out of ten, baby knives, I give it eight and a half. Baby knives out of ten. Mm. So round round score is eight point eight and a quarter. Baby knives. Eight, <laughs> eight and a handle. Knife. The handle of the baby knife. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let's get into full spoilers. Will we do through the whole plot? I don't know because I really want to just talk about what your most excited cameo was which will be the first question kevin but in case you have you don't know how it works we're going full spoilers we're putting the spoiler warning up for you now so if you haven't seen the movie you can pause it here come back to us it's in the description of video podcast whatever you want to see start right there and we'll be talking full spoilers after you see the movie and be the first ones to talk to you about the movie or if you're a sadist like one andy drogon you cannot see the movie I highly doubt that, uh, especially this movie, and get all the spoilers and then go see the movie. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're, you're pulling to the theater right now in your car, and we'll see you in about two hours and seven minutes. Enjoy you a popcorn, <laughs> but guess what? You will not buy a Deadpool popcorn bucket because they sold they out don't. the first very don't. night. <laughs> so, Kevin, let's go. Full spoilers. Here we go. Uh, so we kick it off with our theater experience of Deadpool oh. and Wolverine, which 
includes the popcorn bucket because Eric got Eric got the uh, the theater early. Saw the AMC Tyson's, and I was like, "All right, cool. Hey, you're there early. I know Max probably wants a snack." They got a popcorn bucket, gave it to me. And he's like, they've been sold out since the first screening on Thursday at wow. 3 o'clock. I'm like, well, never mind. I saved $40 this time. I just imagine somewhere in somebody else's podcast right now, they have all the popcorn it's just buckets. popcorn buckets everywhere. Right there. And then, right here, all I got is an old Boba Fett helmet and a Captain America and a Mjolnir. Cause I, cause I remember your brother, he brought the... Um, the uh Doctor Strange Doctor Strange gimmick. Uh, uh it was uh, just a cube. Box. It's all it was. It wasn't yeah. relative to the movie at all. It was just a cube. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not I'm not really a popcorn tin person because I feel like you get more popcorn if you just buy mm. regular size. So I'm just like, I don't know really want it. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I we saw it in Dolby and I think this is a movie worth Dolby. Um I think I kinda talked about Twisters was worth it for the sound. This is worth it for the visuals just because the colors on the suits pop. And they're already colorful suits, but they pop even more. I can imagine the yellow on Wolverine's probably mm. was like just brilliant. Just brilliant. <laughs> uh, but Kevin, how was your theater experience? So we saw it in a Regal. I haven't been to a Regal in a while. Mm-hmm. And it was a different experience because, uh, you know, usually you walk into a Cinemark, walk to an AMC. First thing you do is redeem your, your online ticket basically through the thing and then mm-hmm. they scan and they let you in. Regal, you just walk in. <laughs> you just walk Come in. Come on in. You sit where you want. We don't care. <laughs> it it, it kind of feels like that. And then eventually somebody stops you and they have like their little kiosk on the wall and they scan your phone. But okay, your team's over there. Have a good day. I'm like, huh? That was That's okay. It? That's weird. All right. Um, so we got our snacks. Of course, I got popcorn. No kettle corn. We saw it in a Damn Regal. It. Damn Regal. <laughs> but uh, Regal's done some, at least this week I went to in Frederick, Maryland. They did, they did not, done some up, upgrades. Mm-hmm. Um, the seats are comfy, but they're like airport seats. They're very, very narrow. Mm. And it's like you know how in some of the some of the Dolby theaters AMC, the the some of the two seats you, you can lift up the things. Like if you know, more sitting together, you can lift up the seat and kind of have a. Oh, I seat. tried to. She wouldn't let me. I was like, you know, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one no though. This one is like no. This is your seat and this is where you sit. Um, I get over all that. It's whatever. They also have a weird VIP section in Riga where apparently it's kind of like free for all. You get free. Soda refills, free popcorn refills, well, free everything. You see stubs if you're on the A list, you know, you get the same thing. Yeah, but in there, it's like it's like this whole different area. It's weird. I, I have to figure it out because that actually looks pretty interesting. <laughs> but the the main thing that really made me weird me out and made me kind of upset about this movie trip was I bought a screening at four fifteen. Mm-hmm. What time movie started? Four forty five. Four forty eight. Oh, I was close. Hey, here's the thing. I think <laughs> Dolby also might be worth it because the trailer started before the start time of the movie. So I saw it at 4.15 on a Friday. Trailers were already going. I know sometimes like the AMC Movie Minute, they have random TV trailers. It was playing full out, the full Disney trailers or whatever. And the movie started at like 4.20, like full actually starting like, all right, Dolby is the way to go with this, I guess. The thing that people did too, it's differently. The first 15 minutes of... Screen time, mm-hmm. or, or started, which is commercials. I didn't see a trailer until like 4.25. Mm. <laughs> so that, that, that was different too. Um, and, um, but it, it, other than that, it was a great theater experience. <laughs> also, I don't know if you... If, did you see the Captain America trailer in your... I did, and that white and black was not great. <laughs> in the dark, I was like, ah, stop it. Dark cold, dark white, dark white. I, I don't know what happened in yours, but in my, in my theater, they took out the scene where Isaiah shoots at the president. They I, did I take that out as well, uh, which yeah. I, I remember. The, I heard that during the move that they took it out in just India, but they took it out everywhere. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to applaud that. Good job. <laughs> Good editing on your part. Good editing. Good editing. <laughs> it, it, it was seamless. I thought maybe we get another two seconds on the end of it, but what are you going to do? Whatever. What are you going to do? But other than uh, that, it was, it was a great theater. Experience. Great. Well, let's talk about the movie, actually, then. <laughs> What's going on? Kevin, your favorite cameo character in Deadpool and Wolverine. So uh, we talked about this on uh, through text on Friday, and I gave you two. Um, I actually don't remember what I gave you, actually. Hey, let me look that up on my, on my hmm. nifty little, oh, Apple, nifty Apple, little Apple Watch over there. Yeah, 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 he forgot his phone. I, I, I am in the future as I'm scrolling through my text messages here and looking for Andrew Hood. And You have a tie between? I have a tie between Gambit and I, I think before I said um, Patch, but I changed my mind. Okay. It's definitely Gambit and um, Calvary. Cal- Cavalrine, yes, Cavalrine, correct, yes. yes. Who, Kevin? Which is who? Because that guy. Because you see in the credits, like, wait, what the hell? I'm like, oh, because of that. 
Yeah, because so as he's going through the uh, the Wolverine montage, um, there's a certain awesome part where we see a Wolverine, we see his um, we're looking for just just his his fat his stature from behind, and we think it's again it's probably you know Hugh Jackman, but he turns around and it's a glorious Henry Cavill. And all his cavalness. And, and he looks good. so good. And you're like, I That's think Henry right. Cavill's in that mutton chop and hairdo. I think somewhere in there. Now, I've been saying for years that I want, um, I can't remember his name of the actor right now. He's one of my favorite actors, actually. Um, the Bear's brother. I've John Bernthal. Pun- Punisher, Punisher, but Punisher. Yeah, but I want him as Wolverine. I've changed my mind. I hope the MCU Wolverine is Henry Cavill. <laughs> Well, I know it's not going to be, but now I'm like, Ugh, especially now it's like not it. going to be. <laughs> and then even, even to the point where he did the, uh, the 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 loaded fist thing, like he did Mission Impossible, but he did it with the claws. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my! I need this forever. <laughs> but and then the Gambit and yeah. Henry Cavill were my two favorites. All right. And the Gambit one we'll talk about obviously because that's part of the plot. Uh, mine easily had to be Human Torch. Uh, Chris Evans ah, is Human yes. Torch because. She couldn't write that any better. Of uh, like, he's gonna say it. He's gonna say it. I bet. Flame on. You're like hell yeah. That was like, <laughs> I know it was like the first probably thirty minutes of the movie or something like that. And it's like hell yes. This is what this movie needs to be. Finally, here's the thing. We got a Reed Richards. We got a Human Torch. Now we will get a Thing or a Sue Storm connection before we get truly the Fantastic Four movie next year. Michael Chiklis and Jessica Alba. Right? Jessica Alba popping up somewhere yeah. in one of these movies. <laughs> Captain America, because that totally makes sense for them to pop up there. Michael Chiklis can be, 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 be kind of like, I don't know, a police captain to help Captain America that do that true. there easily. Could do that. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go through the plot, kind of talk about what we want to talk about, obviously what we can. Um, obviously, the movie starts off, it's back in 2018. Um, uh, Wade, we'll say Deadpool, um, has used Cable's time machine to save everybody uh, on his Earth, one ten zero zero five. However you want to say that. That's how I'm going to say it now. Um, he's used it um, to actually save everybody. He's also... This is kind of a confusing thing for me, that he used the device to go to Earth-616, so it's also a interdimensional yeah, travel device so. to get interviewed by Happy Hogan to uh, audition for the Avengers. thought it was really fun that you got the sort of proto-Captain America shield that we've seen in the Iron Man movies. You had um, the Iron Man kid helmet that... Peter Parker or the Spider-Man now in Earth 616 War in Iron Man 2 and then it was covering obviously Pete's photo of Tony because no one in 616 knows what his identity is anymore. I'm trying to think I've done research yet but 2018 would have been Infinity War right? It would have been right before it's probably, it was probably like right before Infinity War yeah. Mm-hmm. So everybody's still on Earth nobody snapped away yet. Makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, but obviously Wade fails the interview uh, <laughs> the great moment of oh we're standing up oh that's not good we're standing up and it's like it's okay and obviously uh, Ryan Reynolds as, as, as Deadpool is just elect I think that's a, a make or break on this movie if you love Ryan Reynolds you're sold on this movie if you hate Ryan Reynolds' yeah. humor you're gonna be like ah, it's okay I don't like it but even this opening scene though the movie kind of announced that okay we, we get what we want to do Deadpool Wolverine fart and button jokes but it had a heart to it he really just wants to do something that make, that's bigger than himself and I think Ryan Reynolds played that very thoroughly of course, then going forward from here, it was just, you know, a, a joke fest. But, yeah. but most of them landed, so it's a good joke fest. Uh, but then we cut back to Earth 10 It's a couple years later. Wade now works for a car company, kind of a CarMax uh, knockoff, Kevin. Yeah, it, very it related to... to I know, I was like, kiss Kevin right now. <laughs> he and Peter are working at the CarMax together. Peter trying to get uh, Wade to get the suit back on, but Wade doesn't want to. He's kind of in a slump trying to figure out, you know, what is his purpose? He needs meaning in his life. We also find out that he and Vanessa broke up, which I thought was an unfortunate thing in this movie because they're kind of, I like really like the dynamics of that in one and two. More and I actually rewatched one and two the day before we went to the theater and we're like, oh, oh. man, your crazy matches my crazy. And I was like, oh, that's such a good dynamic in their relationship. Um, I meant to do that, but I had a, I had a crazy. That's crazy. okay. You remembered it at least. Yeah. Um, it turns out Wade has a surprise birthday party uh, while the TVA is taking photos of Wade on the streets. He's like, what the hell is going on there? But Peter brings in a surprise party where we find out he and Vanessa are just uh, friends, sort of more than anything. But we find out that Colossus, Negasonic, Teenage Warhand, or sorry, Warhead, Yukio, uh, Dopender, uh, Blind Owl, <laughs> Shatterstar, 
Um, the the bald guy. I forget what his name. The bald guy. The bald biker guy. <laughs> the bald biker guy was because <laughs> uh, so the bald biker guy. I forgot what his name was. Uh, he w- in the first movie he was he like broke up fights didn't have a line. The second movie he tried to be like you know Wade you might have denial about this and he said no more lines for you. And oh, this yeah, one he okay, goes okay. Wade you got menstruation. And he's like are we improving now with your character? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. Also, I thought it was cool kind of bring back Shadowstar. Cool. Because I believe Shadowstar was the Black Ranger in the Power Rangers movie. Um, that is, that, no, that, incorrect. He's actually uh, in the Mortal Kombat movie. He's the that's what it is. Yeah, Scorpion's yeah. son, but isn't related to anything essentially. Let's talk about the movie the better. Let's move on. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but they're all living. Uh, Wade's doing his little party. It is that sort of small talk of what are you watching? Oh, all, all this good stuff. Wade's interrupted because the TVA come knocking on his door. Sorry, mind you, this is not how the movie started. The movie started with uh wade literally digging up the grave of logan uh at the end of logan who knows how long after saying oh surely you know he's indestructible he's coming back better than ever and then goes because logan's dead we see wade pull up his adamantium corpse uh kind of do some australian puppetry with him which leads to I, I can't believe the Christ hashtag Crisis Crew didn't call us out. I'm not talking about that part. Uh, <laughs> leads to um, Wade at this time using a fat, fighting the TVA with uh, Logan's dead adamantium skull. All the while, while and sings "Bye Bye Bye" and in a dancing Deadpool or dancing the choreography of "Bye Bye Bye." Now, question to you, hoodie, and you, uh, maybe you've seen it. Maybe I haven't seen it anywhere. You think that was Ryan Reynolds in the costume doing the dance? Unfortunately, the dance? Kevin, it's been confirmed it was not Ryan Reynolds doing oh, okay. the NSYNC Bye 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 dance because they're actually, why well, I said a dancing Deadpool, because they had a professional dancer do the Bye 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 choreography. I thought it would have been cool if we found out that it was just Justin Timberlake in the mask. So yeah. to credit him. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, was fu- kind of cool. it was funny because <laughs> NSYNC actually showed up to the premiere and then we all obviously knew what the soundtrack was of this movie uh, going into it. But it's funny that Justin Timberlake was the only one who didn't show up. So the premiere. Well, he, he's going through some stuff. Yeah, he's he got arrested. It's all good. <laughs> uh, but in classic Deadpool fashion, which is every movie, it started with that. Then you dial it back, which leads us to this birthday party. Uh, Wade's pulled by the TV for the very first time. Wig snatched, uh, <laughs> which we saw from the trailer. And uh, Wade is shown into the TVA where he meets Paradox, a.k.a. Tom Wom's gang. Yeah, Capricious right? bag. Yeah, what? <laughs> from Succession, right? Correct. Uh, he he ultimately is the successor in Succession. <laughs> oh, he, so, he, so he won. Gotcha. Yeah, spoiler. Uh, <laughs> in case you wanted to watch Succession. Great show, but hey, you're, you're too late. Uh, <laughs> but turns out uh, Par- Paradox is offering Wade a place on, in Earth 616 to be, kind of be, like we learned from the trailer, Marvel Jesus, an agent for the TVA to help work for them. Um, kind of cleaning up timelines and all that good stuff. They give Wade a new suit, which we saw in the trailer as well, and an overabundance of butt slaps and crotch grabs. I'm just like, it keeps going. All right. And then at the end, he goes, that Taylor is a sexual predator over there. I also kind of saw, saw, this, as, saw this as like a uh, also a, a jab at um, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. When oh, for just some reason, for those two ching, movies. Ching, ching. It was just a, a blatant butt shot for all of, all three of them. Like, even in the third one, it was uh, Alicia Silverstone, George Clooney, and Chris O'Donnell. When they suited up, all three of them had butt shots. I was like, what? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do you see that? <laughs> uh, it turns out we find out Wade's timeline is deteriorating. Deteriorating. Whatever. That word. Um, <laughs> as a result of the anchor being of that universe dying, Deadpool thinks it's himself. No, it's Logan. And we get obviously a little little rant on that. Um, anchor beans, which we'll have a little conversation later. Uh, don't oh, yes. worry about that. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, Theory there. The word. Very interesting mechanism. Mechanism. Correct. 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 Uh, turns out that they're using paradox is using a time ripper to make the uh, universe deteriorating pretty seamless. Uh, they're going ah, oh, then uh, dead as a mercy kill. Um, but uh, Wade obviously doesn't want that to happen, so he steals Paradox's temp pad to travel the multiverse to find a variant of Logan's, which we get, like Kevin said, the Cavalrine. We get a very short, uh, kind of comic-accurate comic depiction accurate of Hugh Jackman as a short L- Logan. We get, um, I think it's Age basically, of... Basically, that, that Wolverine is the size of Ray Mysterio Jr. 
Basically. Essentially, pretty much. Um, <laughs> we get Patch, uh, the gambling Wolverine, which how can you not know that's Wolverine? He just has an eye patch over his eye. Um, we get the, it's kind of an iconic X-Men cover of Wolverine on, on an X-Cross. Well, yeah. uh, a thing of red uh, skulls are above him, below him. And then we get, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Age of Apocalypse 1, we yes. only had one hand, basically. One hand, he's very furry. And we get an old man Logan actual old man logan of grandpa logan sitting with a cowboy hat and shotguns weighed immediately we also got the, the original uh, logan when he was in his red and red and yellow uniform and about to fight the hulk yes we which got, we, got, we got a hulk hand i can't remember we got the hole for the full hulk we the saw hulk, hulk side is what we saw we yeah. saw his face on the claws which oh sorry uh which is an iconic comic cover um we saw the side of him and that's what it was but that was kind of our our wolverine montage which i thought was really cool um, and it, re- it really like set the tempo of what's to come in this movie until obviously Wade finds the Wolverine we know who I guess summing up his story because he's like oh we'll get a third act reveal we do get a third act reveal what happened is this Wolverine in his universe he more of a drunkard more than anything goes to the bar too often one night went to the bar too long and everyone in the expansion died essentially and he didn't wasn't there to save them I thought it was a, a really um, tragic backstory for this Logan. Mm. It's part of the reason why he wears his costume. Um, but I still kind of wanted to see the ramifications of basically all the X students getting murdered, basically in that mm. universe. Like, what, what is that universe like now because of that? It's bad, real bad. Yeah, uh, real, real racist against mutants, probably. <laughs> Mutinous? Is that the word? Mutinous, sure. We'll go with that. Speciest? I don't know. Uh, turns Speciest. out Wade brings Logan back uh, just to say, hey, we got one. And Paradox says, you brought the worst Wolverine back. He then prunes them into the void after Wade realizes that Paradox is acting rogue and that he's acting without the TVA's guidance, which I thought was cool that it connected with Loki. This really did a good job. This movie did a good job of really the opposite of what Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness did, where it completely like disregarded what happened in WandaVision to a degree of where the characters were. Yeah. Um, this was like, all right, cool. Loki said, like, the TVA is good now, but there's this rogue agent guy acting in a separate room corridor that nobody knows about. It, it kind of speaks to what the TVA was anyway, because remember, the whole point of a part of season two of Loki was there was this rogue division of the TVA yeah. trying to just erase universes. So it kind of kind of goes back to TV probably doesn't even work honestly as a larger construct. They're still figuring out what they're doing, you know. Exactly. So, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be uh, if they wanted if they wanted to do a Loki season 3, it was a TVA season. TVA is going to keep keep yeah. having rogue divisions basically. And you have par- Paradox <laughs> pop up. You're like, "Oh, look, that's really dope cuz I think that's an actor that would Tom the actor who plays Tom Wyman's game in Paradox would show up on a Loki show, you know. This was actually was originally written for to be a um uh, uh Owen Wilson uh, variant. Oh, Mobius reason, variant. Mm-hmm. And then it, for some reason it didn't work out and it got, they did this instead. I think it's a, all in all, it still worked though. Yeah. Um, but essentially they're pruned into the void, uh, which uh, do, 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 do. Uh, they obviously have a little bit of a fisticuff, which was really fun to see Wolverine do the let's F and go and like <laughs> run towards Wade as an actual like animal more than anything, which I thought was cool. We get an introduction of Baby Knife. Obviously they're fighting and knowing. They can't kill each other, but they're going to have their way with each other. You know what I'm saying? Some tension. I also, also thought it was smart because I think I said this when, we, when the first trailer stopped. I was like, how is he stopping his claws with a sword? And then we realized, oh, they give animanium swords in TVA. Like, makes oh, a lot of sense. That makes sense. <laughs> um, but as they are fighting, I thought it was cool before we get introduced to a character. We see um, Cap, Captain America's old shield from like World War II, kind of the more of a regal looking shield and not the circular one. We see Thor's like kind of classic helmet with the kind of wings yeah. on the side of it too, which is cool. Uh, obviously we see the 20th century uh, Fox logo, but it isn't until we say, Hey, cut it out from a top. You hear a familiar voice. It's one Chris Evans looking real good. Got the brown hair, not the blonde with the highlights, you know, like yeah. Captain America did, which is their immediate sign. You see him in a blue garb. You're like, okay, Captain America, he comes down. Uh, trying to give a talk to Wade and uh, Logan, but all of a sudden they're surrounded by uh, X Men villains, <laughs> mainly Toad. You got Pyro, you got Sabretooth. Uh, they show up in uh, a Fantastic Car, which was cool because obviously we got yep. that in San Diego Comic Con. What the actual one's going to look like in the movie? Um, they had a variant version of Red Skull's car, but it had an Iron Man logo on it, 
they were teasing what was to come, Kevin, of Iron Man villain. <laughs> and they also had the ice cream truck or the cookie truck from Moon Knight, which is correct awesome. as well, which wasn't as more of a like an obvious thing. You're like, oh, that looks familiar. And like, oh, that was. And you know what? Thinking back at Moon, Moon Knight, kind of feels like he would have been a Fox movie. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> could have been. Could have been. Yeah, been. Like you, you fit with the Constantine days and all that good exactly. stuff. You know yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, turns out, uh, like we just said, uh, this is the Human Torch, Chris Evans, and not Captain America. He flames on. Flame on, baby. And my God, have I missed that animation of what he looks like as Human Torch? And I can't wait to see what Joe Quinn looks like next year at Fantastic Four. Will it look the same? Who knows? Uh, but obviously, he looks like he's about to, you know, wreck some fools. But Pyro, being the one who can control fire, just sucks up all his fire. He gets crotch shotted on a billboard, takes a dip, takes a dive. You think he's dead? No, he didn't die because he lasted like two more scenes at least for now. <laughs> Commend Chris Evans as being a good sport about this because not only this movie, he was but in also in Free Guy. Um, free Guy. Mm-hmm. He's just a good sport about all this stuff. Like. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get these actors who do the, like these roles like this, and it, like for Jason Statham, takes everything way too seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, these are movies; he's carrying them to have fun. He's just having a fun time with it. And I, and when he eventually does come back as Captain America, whether it's you know Old two years Cap, from now, four Cap. years from now, mm-hmm. it's going to be well well deserved. I, yeah. I would say the, 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 the applause he gets. Uh, but essentially, Human Torch is captured, and Wade and Logan are captured not until uh, after uh, Logan. And Sabretooth have a face-off. Oh, it's been 10 years in the making. They're brothers. They're like, oh, yeah, according to X-Men Origins, they are. Uh, and Logan immediately decapitates Sabretooth. He's dead. They're captured, too, with thanks to a magnet. And they're sent to uh, Ant-Man's corpse base, a.k.a. led by Cassandra Nova, who we find out is the sister of one uh, Professor X. And she, in some instances, died in the womb. In some instances, she killed Xavier. But she's been sent to the Void, and she's kind of been the cleanup crew uh, for kind of small projects So when it comes to the Void. Also, a uh, quick question for you. I just, I just want to get, get your um, take on this. Uh, did you like the um, the uh, Mad Max-style speech that Deadpool gave? Yeah, I think it was really, really fun. Obviously, we had Furiosa come out a couple months ago. Only like two months ago. Not, yeah, two months ago. And so it's very fun of just like we know what Mad Max looks like, that dystopia. And now we can just make fun of those things now, which is fun. And also, do you think that the giant Ant-Man course, is that Scott Lang or is that Hank Pym? Uh, 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 Kevin, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't be able to tell you on who it was. It could be anybody in that. So. I was just curious because I'm like, he, he didn't mention, he did make a Paul Rudd joke there. Paul Rudd finally aged. Well, so, so there you go. It was Scott. Scott. Lang, Scott. But, you know, there were two of them. Scott, we got to go, Scott. Uh, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Michael Douglas. Uh, turns out, uh, Cassandra Nova, she's got some weird powers because she literally rips the skin off of Human Torch after uh, Deadpool. It seems like he's framing Human Torch for saying all these bad things about her. We later find out, spoiler in the end cameo, that it is Human Torch talking shit about Cassandra Nova the entire <laughs> time. So it was a justified death, I guess, if you want. Um, but this is when uh, essentially Cassandra says, like, if you're not joining me, then I'm going to feed you guys uh, the Alioth. Elias, sorry, yes. Yeah. Which is when we're, where he goes, oh, from season from Loki season one, episode <laughs> five. <laughs> and like, hell yeah, that's right. That reminds me of in Deadpool when he saw Juggernaut. Oh my gosh, it's Juggernaut from episode issue 45 of the X Men. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like, just, it's so serial like that. Yeah. All this stuff. But I love it. I think that's the humor that like connects everything and makes you appreciate what we got. Uh, but Logan and Wade escape. Uh, they run into a variant of uh, Deadpool called Nice Pool with long hair. Who does give them a car, which is a weird... I don't know what the car was. I don't know, Kevin, if you paid Honda attention. Honda Odyssey. Hi, sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> gives them a car and how's, helps them find where the Void's borderlands are to get out of the Void. But not until they run into Dogpool, which, my God, Mary Puppin's Dogpool, a.k.a. Peggy, the real dog, has taken over the internet. And I love... More, I was like, I appreciate this. I was like, well, I know what we're doing for Teddy for Halloween this year. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, cause I, I'll probably... Tr- Try to show my daughter parts of this movie next year. Uh, I can't wait to show her Dogpool because I think, I think she's gonna think she's adorable. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Dogpool. I think was the funnest thing that like kept going throughout the movie, and obviously, hopefully, goes on longer in future movies based on that dog. Um, but I think that was every time it worked. It was dogpool. Sometimes that stuff might not work, but anytime it's a dog, an animal, or a dog like that, it works. It kind of reminds me of uh, the dog from The Mask. 
Mm-hmm. When you put the mask on, mm-hmm. everybody, everybody wanted Jack Russell Terrier. No, I wanted one. Still want one. <laughs> Just in case. Here's the mask. What do you want to exactly. do? Are you the one? Uh, they do. Um, obviously, uh, Wade and Logan do have some fun back and forth. Eventually, Wade does kind of show his hand of, you know, the mission of way, uh, him trying to save his universe, getting Logan in a new universe where he can live. Yeah, that's all BS. Uh, Wade, uh, or sorry, Logan immediately turns the car off. Uh, they have a exchange of words. Logan says, says, say one more word, and it was about to go on. And Deadpool goes, gubernatorial. <laughs> and then the fight <laughs> begins in the car. And when Deadpool is immediately rushed in or pushed into the radio, you hear, whoa. And then Grease goes off, which is great. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it had a very lengthy car battle. I thought mm. it was a lot of fun. Um, I think it's cool when you do these fights with these two because basically it would always end in a stalemate. Because mm. even even when we know from the end of the movie, even if you cut Deadpool's head off, he's still going to be Deadpool. Mm. <laughs> he just won't have a head head body with him. Headpool, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but eventually, this does lead to way, uh, Logan getting the upper hand, kind of using the seatbelt to tie Deadpool up. Uh, but this is when uh, I think they're both knocked unconscious, right? Both like basically sleep, basically. Yeah, um, that they're driven to the borderland where they are shown into a base where they are introduced to one Electra, played by Jennifer Gardner, Blade, yeah. played by Wesley Snipes, Gambit, played by Channing Tatum, and spoiler from the final trailer, even though it was a whole thing why it happened, uh, X23, played by Daphne Keene, who you might otherwise known uh, from that light now. <laughs> So upset they killed her off in the third episode. Like she that. lied the whole time. They knew she was in it. She knew. She was so cool, man. Uh, but they essentially are the resistance fighting against Cassandra Nova, obviously from the respected universes. And for the most part, they're from the movies they're in. Um, Electra getting this line of like, uh, oh, yeah, Daredevil died. And you're like, oh, that's right. Ben Affleck. Her version was that, and she they divorced, so she's probably glad that Daryl died. Blade, yeah, there, there, was a, there was a joke where he was like, oh, sorry about hearing that. She's like, eh, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, really funny. Blade getting the joke of, I'm the one and only uh, Blade, kind of pause, pause, like, oh, okay, yeah, Burst is also coming too. And then Gambit, pretty much his whole line of Channing Tatum, I thought was really cool live action. First live action, well, I heard Taylor Kish in X-Men Origins, but first, like, suited up version of Gambit, of um, being like, oh, I never got the chance. Some some of you guys got never have, have, haven't had a chance since. I never got the chance. <laughs> I feel like I lived in a void. I was born in a void. I was I was born born in a void. <laughs> also, uh, Jeremy Tatum's uh, Gambit accent was immaculate. Screen is going to the time. Maura didn't get it because she has Maura has no idea of what Gambit sounds like. I'm like, that's what he sounds like in X Men '97. And, and even original. Sometimes I'm like. What if it wasn't for a subtitle? Like, what did Gambit just say? I have no idea what he's talking about. No even, idea what he's saying. I think even going back to the Blade and uh, Deadpool slash what's his name's Ryan Reynolds interaction, I didn't know this. I thought it was in an interview on TikTok like actually an hour ago. They buried a hatchet from Blade mm-hmm. 3 a long time ago. They've been mm-hmm. friends for like the last 20, 25 years. Mm-hmm. So um, it was fun to kind of watch them. Like, yeah, I hate that guy. I never liked Deadpool. I was like, oh, because you never really liked. Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. That's why you weren't on set with him at all <laughs> in Blade 3. <laughs> and I, I thought this was really cool. I know a lot of people were like, oh, they just brought him back to run back. But these like characters, like this was the farewell to Fox that we've kind of been saying. It was cool to get that and just like pay homage because I think everyone's, especially Blade, have wanted Wesley Snipes to be back as Blade. I know technically he made a cameo in What We Do in the Shadows for a hot second as Blade slash Wesley Snipes. Um, but it was cool to get that Electra. I I never watched the first the Electra movie, so I only know her from it. Daredevil. Um, Hello, Matthew. And then Channing Tatum obviously was great. I thought it was cool to see those powers. So that way, when we do get an actual X Men movie, we're ready to see what those powers look like with a full budget directly towards those powers, not just like a tenth of a budget towards the powers. When we get to what what comes <laughs> next, actually, later remind me of my idea of. For what they should do with the X-Men. I think right. I've said it before in the podcast, right. but I'll just say it again. There we go. And obviously, uh, uh, Laura, a.k.a. X-23, is directly from Logan. She's grown up. She doesn't know this Logan, but they kind of connect of like, you know, Logan, you might not have been there to save the day, but you were the hero I needed. You helped me grow up, which is really fun. Really good touchy moments there. Um, but this leads to everybody teaming up, getting in the Honda 
Odyssey, Odyssey or thing yeah. or whatever the hell the car is. <laughs> and we hear uh, Bring Him Out, but this cool like superhero version of it. I'm like, damn, this song slaps as a superhero theme right now. <laughs> Didn't they, didn't they do that too in the first one with the um, X Gun Give It To You? X Gun Give It To You was just was just X Gun Give It To You, but this like had a whole score behind like, it, like so, an orchestral thing about yeah, it. Yeah, I, like, it it it. I can't remember what movie it was, but it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> uh, but they arrive to uh, Cassandra's base. Uh, it, obviously, we get kind of the Void Avengers or whatever we want to Avengers, call them, Void Avengers. <laughs> uh, they take on all the variants, knowing that they need to get jugger the jugger. There's a juggernaut variant. Um, Lady Deathstrike variant. There's a, a Zazel variant, a Psylocke variant, Psylocke. Toad, yeah. Sabretooth. We already talked about um, the like sailor guy from from uh, Punisher. For, that was Kevin Nash in the oh, original yeah, Punisher yeah, yeah. movie. <laughs> um, and then obviously a Juggernaut. And, and I thought this was cool. They could kind of get away with it. And the void is it wasn't the actual actors because these are all variants. So it's not the same actors playing those because they'd be even more expensive. Um, but it is them taking on. Our Fox heroes, while Wade and Logan go take on Cassandra to distract her. Uh, in doing so, I thought it was cool effects too. If Cassandra was able to like put her fingers mentally or actually physically through people's heads, which was the way, cool. the way they described it that she, um, Professor X can do it with just his mind, she mm. has to touch people. Oh. So I thought that was a pretty good to access memories and all They're the same, stuff. but they're different, yeah. kind of thing. Um, but we do get. Uh, both at some point, uh, Wade and Logan both have that happen, and we see their flashbacks of all our movies, which was fun. But this is where we do get kind of a little bit of the deep dive of, of Logan and what happened in his universe with the X Men. But ultimately, Laura uh, is able to get Juggernaut's helmet off by decapitating him, and they put it on Cassandra to say, Hey, you're gonna help us out, and if not, you know, we're gonna keep you in the helmet. That neck. <laughs> um, we find out Paradox is working with Pyro on the side at the same time. Um, Pyro shoots. Uh, Cassandra, but in doing so, they take the helmet off of her and she pops them bullets right back out. She lets Wade and Logan go through a Doctor Strange portal as a magician popped by randomly throughout the void, and they escape in the nick of time, which we've seen from the trailer as as uh, Elias uh, encapsulates the Ant Man camp. Did you see who they said the magician may be? Actually, I thought it was funny. I don't think it's true, but supposedly the magician that she stole that slinging from was a magician from She Hulk. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Our deleted scenes. We know we obviously know there's a deleted scene with Rob McElhenney as a TVA agent. So I kind of want to see that just because they're like best friends now. I kind of want to see how they, how they like on screen. I kind of want a Rob McElhenney, Ryan Reynolds buddy comedy thing soon. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, watch Welcome to Wrexham. There you go. Because I bet you this next season will have some Deadpool cameos <laughs> and all that stuff in there. Um, but Wade and Logan pop back on on Earth ten zero zero five. Find out Paradox is beginning to use the Time Ripper, um, but Cassandra learns Paradox's plan. She intervenes. Wow. Uh, she mind probes uh, Paradox and learns all his plans, and she takes control of the Time Ripper. But in doing so, she leaves a portal open for all the Deadpool variants to arrive. Obviously, Nice Pool and Dog Pool arrive. I'm like, all right, cool, we got some allies. Turns out all the other Deadpools not as friendly as Nice Pool and Dog Pool. And this is um. This is what they call the Deadpool core. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's basically a, a bunch of people who can die who are really good at fighting. He's <laughs> fodder to a degree. Um, exactly. But we get a lot of variants here. Obviously, we get Kid Pool and Baby Pool, which were Ryan Reynolds' real kids. Um, we had Welsh Pool, who was actually a player for Wrexham, which I found out about. You had Dance Pool in there, uh, Panda Pool, Lady Pool, which we finally, we finally found out. Not sure if it was played by or at least was voiced by Blake Lively. Um, Cowboy Deadpool was voiced by Matthew McConaughey, which actually happened in there too, and a bunch of other Deadpool variants happening. I thought well. so one was Nathan Fillion too, but oh yes, Nathan Fillion was Headpool, which was the decapitated yeah. head on sort of like a uh, a spinner hat floating yeah, around that, that, everything. That was funny actually. Wait. It kind of reminded me of, of, of the um, hat box, the hat box ghost on mm. the mansion. Ooh. Kind of what he looks like. <laughs> kind of reminded me of the box ghost. Beware. <laughs> Beware. Beware. Um, but this is when, uh, you know, it looks like all the Deadpool core is about to 
take fire on Wade and Logan. Uh, nice pool shows up and Wade says, stand here, <laughs> get shot. And they pull him off to the side. You're not immune. You can't regenerate. No. And Wade uses his body again to cross paths again. And he ultimately he dies. Dog. <laughs> and then this is when Logan uses dog pool where all the Deadpool say, stop shooting. And they won't shoot dog pool. <laughs> the same reason why we wouldn't either. Uh, then this leads to the ultimate scene we were waiting for in the entire movie. Uh, Logan puts his cowl on. It looks sick as hell. He does, Aah! and we have this cool kind of like try to look like a one shot scene fight. At one point, I did get lost on where our Deadpool was. <laughs> At one point, with all the Deadpool was, but... <laughs> I, I did a few. I, I don't know. He when he began, he was like doing like pirouettes around the light mm-hmm. pole while he was taking people down. Then I was like, okay, now it's just a sea of red. I was following the yellow because I can follow the yellow pretty easily. <laughs> um, but eventually they, they fight through a bus. They think, all right, we did it. Wade botches his superhero kind of mini landing. Yeah. All the Deadpools begin to recover. They're about to uh, attack Wade and Logan. But then Peter, otherwise now known as Peter Pool, shows up. And apparently every Deadpool variant also has a Peter. And they all party with Peter for getting Wade and Logan. They go into uh, the sort of metro station for the Time Ripper. Um, where we find out Paradox tells them the only way to stop the Time Ripper is for someone to use their body as a conductor to stop the energy flow power conduits yeah. into the device. Um, ultimately, we think, all right, cool. Um, Logan's going to do it. And I thought my theory while this was going on, I was like, all right, cool. Logan will do it. Whoever does it will be atomized. He'll live, but he'll look different when he takes the cowl off. And that's how they explain makes, who makes the Wolverine yeah, is. I, I get what you're saying. Deadpool does a switcheroo. Deadpool does it. At first, you're like, all right, cool. I guess they could do this. I don't know how they explain the Wolverine thing. Wade can't do it alone until Wolverine pops in. They He literally hits his metal snicked into the uh, power conduit, and they turn the device off, killing Cassandra as far as we know. We think they're dead. This is when Hunter B-15 from Loki shows up. She says, Par- rest paradox. Um, we find out that Logan and Wade have both survived and that th- this has stopped Wade's timeline from deteriorating. Um, Wade requests that Hunter B-15 frees some of the others from the void. We only know, thanks to the end of the movie, that X-23 at least survived, as far as we know. But maybe the others, Gambit, Blade, and Electro, went to their own timelines, potentially. See, now, I, I thought what was going to happen in this scene is when it when it, it seemed like there was no hope that the universe was going to deteriorate and go away, mm-hmm. I thought we were going to see a cameo from Loki. Because mm-hmm. he's a god of stories now. He's mm-hmm. really going to pluck that one string like, nah, I need this. Yeah, I and think, I think what's going to happen is that is going to be like a Secret Wars thing. Loki pops up and I tries to right. stop yeah. things. Of like, oh, if Loki's getting in it, things are bad. Exactly. Um, but <laughs> essentially, this leads to another kind of party hangout at Blind Owl slash Wade's apartment. Everyone's back, including Logan, who's staying on Earth 10.005 with Wade, including X-23 as well, a.k.a. Laura. This is where Logan tells Wade to reconcile with Vanessa. They do, and that's the end of the movie, until, obviously, you get the mid credit scene of uh, Good Riddance, Time of Your Life by <laughs> Green Day over the sort of Fox behind the scenes of every Fox yeah. Marvel movie, and we get the uh, end credit scene, which we already talked about. Also, I forgot to talk about it too as well. Uh, when Deadpool first went in TVA, there's a scene of Thor holding him crying. Mm-hmm. That that that's yeah. A- sorry, that that that's a whole scene of <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. Wade sees obviously like, oh, this is what Earth six one six Marvel is, and he does see like this version of Thor holding him with his mask disheveled. Um, a lot of people, thanks to the internet, I kind of thought it too. It was kind of a repurposed scene from Thor: The Dark World of him holding Loki, but. I think they gotta kind of do that in Secret Wars at some point, or Doom Dynasty, or Doom Dynasty, right? Is what it's called. Doom, Doom, Doomsday, Doomsday, Doomsday which yeah. we'll talk about in like two minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was very interesting. But um, all in all, uh, great movie, great fun. Um, like I said, I thought a couple of things would happen differently, but what what we were de- what, what was served to us on a, on a nice little Deadpool and Wolverine platter, I thought was very, very, very good. And we they've kind of positioned ourselves to allow Deadpool to come into our 616 MCU and maybe maybe bring Wolverine and maybe not. Actually, that is false, Kevin, because here, now the best part is what's next, and obviously we'll do the ranking too. Yeah. I think what's going to happen is Earth 10.005 has now kind of been solidified as this is the Fox universe with X-Men and everything, yeah. and we know 
Next is Comic Con, Fantastic Force in its own thing. Maybe it's ten zero zero five. Maybe it's not. Whatever, we'll find out. I think this is teeing up. This world will be incursioning, incurring, whatever the <laughs> the verb of that phrase is, with six one six, which kind of tees up from Doctor Strange two, and will lead to either a Doom Dynasty, Doom Dynasty, or Secret Wars happening. I'm de- oh, I, I, I feel mm-hmm. like definitely the Fantastic Four universe is going to end. At the end mm-hmm. of that movie, mm-hmm. which will put them either on this Earth or six one six Earth, because what they're doing, I think, basically, if, if you're into the comics, um, eventually the uh, Earth six one six Marvel comic universe and Ultimate Universe had an incursion, and basically, what happened is that the writers be like, "We want you, we don't want you, we don't we want you, we don't want you," and now we're all one universe. Is so why now there's two Spider Men in the Marvel Universe, mm-hmm. Marvel Morales and, and Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. That's what they're working toward. It'll just be interesting to see how they actually go about it to get there and make it all make sense in, what, 2027? Yeah, 2027. I think if they wait long enough, they really could group in the Sony Universe there, too, if they wanted to in Secret Wars and just like, all right, we're done. We did it. It's ours now. Well, get rid of it. <laughs> the Hulk's, I, I, too, I, I really wish they could figure out a way to get the Hulk away from um, Universal. I really wish they would. Well, because... they kind of. As long as it's Scar, his son, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, Kevin, I guess let's talk about the ranking before we go further into what's next, including San Diego Comic-Con. Based on our ranking right now, let me pull it up, where would you put Deadpool and Wolverine? I think, obviously, it's top 25, at least. Yeah. Um, quick question: Should we? No, because no, no, never mind. I won't even add, add Deadpool and Deadpool Two. No, nah, we should not mind. because we are only doing a pure list of Marvel Studios projects. <laughs> I can, I can totally put this anywhere between ten and thirteen. Okay, ten, 13. for me. So ten, you have Guardians Three, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Iron Man, and then Shang Chi, and then Loki's right there at fourteen. I. Yeah. Where is it? I think where's WandaVision? WandaVision's at 17. Spider-Man Homecoming up at 16. I think number 13 seems right. I think for some reason, I think we've we've always held this that the Iron Man is kind of the litmus test yeah. of like, oh, that's like perfection movies. I know be our top 10 Iron is Man really movies. perfect. You gotta be as good as the very first Iron Man movie. And Iron Man is just kind of timeless <laughs> more than anything. Um, but I agree. I think 13 is perfect for it because like we said, we gave it like eight, eight and a quarter. Uh, and I think yeah. that's what's, what's going to be perfect for it. So I'm going to save that right there. So number 13, Deadpool and Wolverine as of right now, opening weekend for us. Will we move it? Probably not because our next entry is Agatha all along, which comes out this fall, uh, which probably won't make it past WandaVision at, at the least. <laughs> we see, yeah, because so WandaVision, WandaVision said 17 is our highest ranked Marvel show. Behind it is Fucking with a Soldier at 20 and Miss Marvel at 21. Mm-hmm. So those are the three highest ranked Marvel shows. None are even close to those three, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, this is the way it kind of worked out. This is the way, and obviously, this year we have, like we said. I guess all along we have potentially the Spider-Man freshman year show. I don't believe it. Rumor is maybe we'll get a tease. I don't think it's going to come this year, especially if Spider-Man's happening. Is the Black Panther animated show that's been being oh, worked yeah. on, but we haven't seen anything about that. So I doubt that's coming out this year either. Um, we also should maybe get get a tease D23 of the of, of um, uh, what's her, Ironheart. Which I don't yes, think we'll see which, until I think that's a January type show. I feel like is it going to be before Falcon Winter um, Brave New World or after Brave New World? I don't think there's any, any time in between. <laughs> Falcon Winter Soldier the movie? No, Kevin Winter Soldier's in his own movie. No, <laughs> yeah, actually, gotta call, call him what it is. Captain America, the Captain America Damn movie. Damn straight. That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> but Kevin, speaking of these things to come, we're not done because while Deadpool and Wolverine talk is over, we talked a good hour about it. We have to talk about what went down. At San Diego Comic Con, kind of your quick hits before we get into the big stuff at Hall H at Marvel. Uh, the boys have now announced a new spinoff uh, that takes place in like the 1950s, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Vought Rising is what it's called. Um, this will star uh, uh, Jensen Ackles as a Soldier Boy. And um, Stormfront, kind of as they're in their original rise of Vought Tower and Vought as a superhero enterprise, which I think is really dope. I think uh, 
I think Soldier Boy quickly became a fan favorite character in the boys, and I don't think they realized it, and they they're now cashing in on that. I mean, Justin Eccles, what can you say? Christmas charisma. He really charisma really is here. charisma. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, it, if it wasn't for um, Battinson's awesome performance in the Batman, I actually wanted him to be Bruce Wayne slash Batman in the James Gunn universe. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, we did get a Percy Jackson panel. They revealed season two. Uh, that sea, sea of the Monsters obviously will be season two. They, re- they showed off uh, who will be Percy's half brother Tyson. Uh, it will be, do, 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 where is the actor's name? Daniel Deemer from the half of it. He will be the Cyclops half-brother, which is really cool. Ed showed up too. Sorry, Adam Copeland. I know it's copyrighted by WWE. What, what are you going to do? We know him as Edge. <laughs> he is Adam Copeland, the rated R superstar. Damn it. <laughs> uh, DC really didn't have too much. Obviously, we knew we did get a trailer for Creature Commandos, which... Looks interesting. I think that's definitely a wait till it's all out show to watch it. Um, but we did get a new trailer for the Penguin, which was cool, which is technically an Elseworlds project. But we did get the big reveal that the DC logo has now gone back to its classic comic book, book roots. And I think the cool thing is what they could do. They kind of tease is the logo for Superman opening will be like Superman's first appearance, and then it flashes into the DC logo. So it'll be like that for like Batman or Wonder Woman. Yeah. yeah. I still say that one of the biggest obstacles I think the DC Universe will have is James Gunn's eclecticness. Mm-hmm. Um, he made us love an eagle. He made us love a raccoon. But you can't do that every movie. You, know what I mean? you can't do it every damn movie, all right? You can't <laughs> love every damn creature that's in the movie. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping for good things, though, because I think Superman's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the, it, the kind of the highlight, I think the big events, I know Comic-Con's over now, but it happened uh, on Saturday. Saturday, right? Or was that Sunday? That was Saturday. Saturday, correct. Uh, was Marvel's Hall H panel. Um, kind of the small news of things really compared to everything else that happened that went down. Uh, we found out Captain America Brave New World got new footage. Um, that They're kind of planning to rebuild the Avengers. Obviously, off of this, we knew the cast. Memeable moment was Harrison Ford <laughs> showing that he actually did the mocap for Hulk. He's just doing Red Hulk, sorry. Whatever the hell he wants. And he went, ah! which was funny and has been memed out the wazoo. We also found out that John Carlo Esposito's character will not be uh, the character we all thought it was. He'll be actually playing uh, Seth Volker, a.k.a. Sidewinder, the leader, a.k.a. King of the Serpent Society. Seth Rollins, he's confirmed, yo. <laughs> I mean, I'm good, because I think he was cut from the original version, so if they got him in this version, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, first footage of the Thunderbolts uh, ahead of its 2025 premiere that's also coming out next year with uh, Captain America Brave New World and Fantastic Four. Uh, we found out through interviews that Bucky is actually going to be a congressman, which I thought is a cool wow. little take they took from What If, which was cool. Um, and that uh, Hannah Joan Kenman uh, will be coming back as Ghost. Um, and it was funny because we, David Harbour did show up in costume as Alexi, a.k.a. Red Guardian. No one else did. Um, but we did get confirmation that uh, Wyatt Russell obviously will be back as U.S. agent. Um, and that's... Oh, what the hell is his name? It's um, Bill Bill Pullman's son. Oh, uh, uh, shoot. Lewis Pullman, there you go, who yeah. we all know as Bob from Top Gun Maverick, will be playing a Bob in this movie. Otherwise, he'll be known as he'll be Sentry in this movie. <laughs> and we also, um, um, Sebastian Sands said that the new Black Widow is going to be like the standout. Um, Florence Pugh is going to be the standout for this movie, but I think it's cool. I think it makes sense. She's got she's to be the heart, and he's obviously kind of the leader, I guess, of that team, of just how we've connected with those characters so far. I wonder if she knows the cheat code to get his arm off. Maybe. Well, apparently he put it in a dishwasher in the footage they've shown. Also, they did see there was footage. With, and Comic-Con's always weird. Like, you get tweets of what the footage was, but you don't get to see the footage unless it's leaked. Uh, that uh, potentially the Thunderbolts took over Avengers Tower. Potentially. Maybe. We that finally might find out what happened. That makes sense. A government, a government of... Um um, government has all the money in the world, so they can buy a building. And mm-hmm. like, okay, here's where you guys need to, need to stay. <laughs> um, but we also know, thanks to another announcement, that in a different universe, which the Fantastic Four takes place in, that the Avengers Tower is actually the Baxter building <laughs> for Fantastic Four, a.k.a. their HQ. <laughs> and also now Fantastic Four is called the Fantastic Four 
first steps. Which uh, could just called it the Fantastic Four and be fine. Like the worked for the Batman. Batman is the Batman. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, 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 they can change the name again. Like they, they, they probably the name. will. Um, they probably will. <laughs> yeah, it, maybe just call call it Four Stick again. Four Stick Two. <laughs> uh, but they did uh, officially said they started production. Um, it is set in a retro futuristic version of the sixties that kind of got leaked at least screenshots, which look cool. We see them in sort of the blue baby blue powder suits is kind of their like space suits as they're gearing up to go into space and get turned into the heroes. They are, we do get shadows of what the thing will look like kind of right out of the comics and make sense. Cause they haven't done the, the animations for it. So it's just a shadow. <laughs> also, uh, the footage showed that, they, um, there will be a, a giant, being named Galactus, and he was peering through a building, so it won't be a cloud that we can kind of see. <laughs> it's like cloudy and everything. Like, nope, it is full blown Daddy Galactus with a it's deep good. ass voice. <laughs> kind of take a bite out of our planet like an apple. He hungry. Where's Silver <laughs> Surfer at? Uh, but I thought it was really cool, and they did show off uh, the. What is it Fantastic Car? I just literally said it. Yeah, the, that's fan, car. Yeah, kind the of, fan, Flew through, the, flew through the um the the uh, the, the arena as like a drone or something, which is cool. To see what it potentially will look like. Uh, but then we got to the end of the presentation things. One more, th- well, technically two more things, because this could have been the showstopper ender of Hall H. The first announcement that they said no, we got another one after that. Because well, we f- one more thing, one more <laughs> one more extra thing, because we found out it's confirmed that Joe and Anthony Russo, the Russo brothers, Agbo films on TikTok, which we've all seen their fun little TikToks, which was fun. They went viral during the pandemic because it was like their interns filming what they did. Um, are coming back to direct the next two Avengers movies, technically Avengers five and six. Uh, Avengers six will be called Secret Wars, which is coming out May twenty twenty seven. Then Hall H. For now, turn- it'll be called Secret Wars. It, I think it will. I think that's definitive. A great title. Um, and then uh, that's May twenty twenty seven. But a year before May twenty twenty six, two years from now ish, uh, the Hall turned green. Avengers Doomsday, and they said to play a pivotal and iconic character who is complex like that. Well, you have to have a special someone. I'll come out of a, a field of Doctor Dooms. But there's one special one in an actual Doctor Doom outfit that looked like he was fitted for it. Because, Kevin, who is revealed that will be playing Doctor Doom in both of these Avengers movies? Robert Doomy Jr. Doomy <laughs> Jr. From now on, will he be called that as he's playing Doctor Doom? Now, obviously, we don't know what this is. Is he a variant? Is he a Tony Stark that took on the mantle of Doctor Doom, which is precedent in the comic, which I talked about with the Funko Pop, too? But he popped up on the mask. He says, what can I tell you? I like playing complicated characters. New mask, same task. Well, the thing about it, and this is too, because it could be confusing for some people that he is not an evil version of Iron Man. What this version is, he is a Tony Stark who maybe didn't have the events of Afghanistan mm-hmm. and meeting Ginsen in the cave. to kind of changed his life around and point him towards something else. This could be a guy who's just like, no, I like being a warmonger. You know what? I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah. And just keeps doubling down and doubling down. And suddenly he is doomed for the world. And it's, uh, in, in the comics, I saw there's a bunch of TikToks, obviously, after this happened. Um, oh, yeah. uh, he not, doesn't necessarily be, say he's Dr. Doom, but he is Dr. Doom. And then he gets transported into the main Earth, Earth 616 in the comics of, at that point, um, and becomes the Iron Maniac as a villain, yeah, uh, and it's a whole thing. I think the big thing you have to do, uh, whether it is Doomsday or Secret Wars, is you have to have him interact with Pete or whoever's left of the Avengers, thinking, "Oh, Tony's back," and then he's like, "No, I'm not," and then like blows up the place or kills somebody. Yeah, and then the other thing too, they said in the comic books that not every Doctor Doom in the comic books is Victor Von Doom. Mm. Sometimes, one time it was Doctor Strange. He was Doctor Doom. Yeah. So, and, and that's the other thing that's scary about this, Tony. Tony was the guy that figured out time travel a random evening in his <laughs> in his office. So imagine if he puts all that focus brain power he has and no kids <laughs> and no pepper exactly. pots. <laughs> so he already knows how to how to break the laws of physics and build a suit of armor and fly in space, all that kind of stuff. So he, putting that brain power into that and also figuring out how sorcery works. Yeah, and encompassing that all into one thing. That Doctor 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 Doom is Doctor Doom is the master of technology and sorcery. He's yeah. just it's kind of overpowered, honestly. In, but, in know, the comics, the comic. there's precedents. I know there's some versions 
where he kind of is the cause of Secret Wars that kind of happened yeah. at the same time, or at least a, an antagonist during that. So it makes sense. Obviously, they we just know a little bit of info now, a lot of bit more of inference more than everything. Um, they didn't clarify if he's popping up in Fantastic Four as Doctor Doom, um, but they did clarify that the Fantastic Four will be in Avengers Doomsday. So I have a feeling Avengers Doomsday is going to take place mostly with that Fantastic Four, maybe a couple of the new heroes, maybe Falcon, maybe Deadpool, Wolverine, maybe they save them for Secret Wars, and then it, it me Doctor Strange pops up finally again with his third eye in the middle of his head. But it is Secret Wars where you bring everybody back. Oh, <laughs> Kevin, what'd you say? I didn't hear you there. Oh, they get your open line. Bring who? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> uh, send everyone. I think um, that makes a sense. And I know a lot of people are upset of like, oh, Doctor Doom has this such rich history in the comics and all this stuff. I think you set up Fantastic Four. If they're doing Galactus now, I think that's who you have be your new baddie. Uh, Fantastic Four 2, whenever that happens in 2028 or 9. But it is the actual variant of Doctor Doom. Whatever happens at the end of Secret Wars is not Tony. and It's something else. Someone else that a, Jamie Lannister, the actor who plays him, as a lot of people wanted at Doctor Doom. Yeah, because everybody um, was saying this cheapens um, Tony Stark's death in... In um, in Variance, like, no. baby, welcome to comic. Tony Stark books. is. I hate to say it to you, Tony Stark is dead. He's gone. He's not coming back. Our this Tony is not Tony is Stark. Mm -hmm. Our I, Tony is it's gone. gonna be. I hate which, you, three thousand. Not I love you, three thousand. <laughs> which goes back to what we were talking about before, anchor beings. Mm -hmm. Yes, full circle. Which you yeah. picked up where I was been going on. Uh, <laughs> this kind of a lot of people thinking about this is that you know Logan being the anchor being of his universe and then Earth ten zero zero five. A lot of people thinking that who is the anchor being of Earth 616, the MCU as we know it, Kev. I think it is Tony Stark. And I mean, whether you like the multiverse soccer or not, a lot of weird stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots mm -hmm. of weird things are going on. Not Kang, though. Kang tossed out. Tossed the trash. Don't care about him no more. Yeah, Kang, Kang, Kang got trapped into a smaller universe and a quantum mini. That's Santa Kang. And that's Santa Kang. That's it. Loki is, he didn't make it to book. So he's, and that's he's it. Done. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> done. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of weird things are going to be going on. So maybe that's because the, the anchor being was. Tony Stark, but mm -hmm. there's also, and I don't think this is true too. The argument is to be said that maybe it's Doctor Strange, because in an interview, Kevin Foggy said, kind of in, in words that Doctor Strange is the anchor of the universe because no one else can handle the events of the multiverse of madness. Mm -hmm. So it could be one of the two. I don't know. I I do think even though multiverse of madness, even though it made almost a billion dollars, it wasn't received well as other movies will have. I still think he's a very important character in the MCU. Regardless, I think it's also we talked about this during WandaVision when they first teased the like the Nexus pill or whatever when there was one of those yeah. random commercials was that a Nexus being is essentially an anchor being of a universe and they just made it MCUified of being an anchor being making more sense of oh that makes sense of what the hell is a Nexus thing yeah. um, but I think could be really cool I think above all else hey you put butts back in seat for at least Avengers five of Robert Downey Jr.'s back, how is he going to be a villain? Apparently, people are unearthing that he did want to play Doctor Doom at one point, um, whether it was in the MCU or was the Fantastic Four movies from back in the day. Um, so it'll be real interesting to see how that kind of wit and charm we're used to, being for Tony Stark as a good guy, how that will look like as a villain now. So um, going back to the anchor being point, the also argument to be made that anchor being is Wanda. <laughs> Maybe. And hey, there was a Wanda trail. There was a Wanda stat Wanda statue in Deadpool Wolverine. So we, we don't know if she's dead. We just know she's not around right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that could be a thing as well. And also, to talk about what's next. So the other rumor and innuendo out there about this is once once Secret Wars happens in 2027, this has been a multiverse saga. Before we had the the um, Infinity Stones, Infinity mm. Saga. Next is going to be the mutant saga, apparently, and. My idea, which will never happen, but it's my idea, and I think they should do it. I don't really want another X Men two hour movie mm -hmm. to introduce me some X Men. Professor X will go out and recruit them, especially blah, because blah. we would have probably three seasons of X Men '97 by then. <laughs> that too, but that's what I'm saying. I will actually like. I wish what they, MC would do, Kevin would do, is invest a Game of Thrones level budget into a Professor X slash. School for Gifted Children's show. Mm, okay. 
and take your time, six, seven episodes, build that up into the X Men movie mm-hmm. over like a year or two. Mm-hmm. So I have two seasons of him finding Cyclops, finding Storm in Africa, um, finding Beast, and then maybe the last episode could be Weapon X, and then we go into the movie and we got to figure out how to get Weapon X away from whoever wants to get him for nefarious reasons. Yeah, I, I think the thing that's interesting is what we were excited for Deadpool, whatever it is, now they have to, I, we would hope Secret Wars resolves it, is Hugh Jackman's probably coming back for Secret Wars. How do you set up a, an X Men without a Wolverine? Because that is the number one X Men. You know, like, yeah. I know, like I know. There's not. rumors of not. there's rumors they now technically. Um, I forgot to mention this that um, at the end of Ca- the Marvels. Um, oh yeah, her oh, what is, it, is it? Monica Rambo or Maria Rambo? Maria Rambo. Maria Rambo ends up as being a Captain Marvel. Um, she ends up in a in a different. No, wait, what is it? No, sorry. It's Monica Rambeau ends up in a universe where the X-Men yeah. are, are, real, are in yeah. real. And her mom is actually Captain Marvel in that universe. We also find out that Kelsey Grammer's Beast is in that universe. I hope, makes sense, that's Earth-10005. And that's how you connect the two there <laughs> again. That would um, be cool. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, but I think at the end of the day, it's it. you have to figure out what the X-Men is. All right, everyone knows that. Uh, everyone, you know, you know, you know, Wolverine, you know, Professor X, you know, Cyclops and Magneto. Everyone knows those ones, and it varies where else, where else you know. If you're gonna start a new team, I think the rumor people have said is gonna be Iceman, Angel, and Beast, and all that. You're like, you you gotta have the tease of what's to come at least, because I know those are kind of the original X Men at one point. Because we know we have two mutants so far. We know that Miss Marvel's a mutant, and somebody else is a mutant. They tease. Can't remember who it was. Um, but and, oh, no, I'm thinking of and the, the tease at the, at the end of the Marvels. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're getting our, our mutant satisfaction from right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know because where you go from there, like you said, but you need to start kind of just trickling, trickling, and maybe that that's part of the of the um, Secret Wars thing. And then when when these two universes merge, it's also a reset. Mm. So maybe that's how we also we get a new T'Challa. That's how we get a new Iron Man. And we can kind of go, go start building blocks for it again, and then have this MCU that we all know and love. But that MCU is dead because of this incursion. Now we have a new MCU. I think also this is just something kind of to wrap it up, but to keep in mind, once Secret War happens in May 2027, the MCU will be 20 years old practically at that point. If you count an Iron Man one at 2008, so I mean, this weekend they they went over 30 billion dollars mm-hmm. in the lifetime revenue. Over all the movies. That, I mean, granted, it's, what, 29, 30 movies, something like that, mm. at this point? But still, $30 billion, I don't think James Bond has made $30 billion. <laughs> it has not. Bond no, you movie. were correct, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, but it's just something interesting to keep in mind is that we're getting, wildly, we're getting close to the 20-year mark of the MCU, which is a generation. Uh, we haven't, this is unprecedented. We haven't really had a, I mean, Star Wars, I guess, technically. But like continually throughout the entire generation, put out projects. So it'd be interesting to see, like you were kind of hinting at, is that twenty year mark the end of Secret Wars, the reset mark of all right? Hey, well, we have new kids here that were born in like twenty fifteen. You're like, good lord, the twenty fifteen year olds are thirteen in twenty twenty eight. And that's the thing about it. Like my nephew, uh, when well, I took him to see Iron Man, he was literally eight, eight or nine mm-hmm. years old. That was two thousand eight. Um, he's going to be like. Starting, not, not starting, but I mean, he, he's a full fledged adult now. You know what I mean? So, uh, in so that'll be 28, that's five years now. He'll be in his 30s. <laughs> Aaron, you know Gra- I mean? Aaron Grau said the, the fact that we're this close to Avengers 10 more than we are to Avengers 1 at this point. <laughs> it, it's a good, it's really true. Avengers 1 was 2012, that was 12 years ago. We're, mm-hmm. we're 12 years removed from the first Avengers movie. And you want to feel real old. Time. Avengers Endgame came out in 2019. It was five years ago. <laughs> we have actually we've passed we've passed the year Endgame takes place in because there was a five year jump. Mm-hmm. We're, we're past. We're that catching now. up to where they are in the MCU. All they had to do was wait <laughs> a year, essentially. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, but if anything, hey, Marvel's still chugging, and if anything, gives us stuff to talk about on this podcast above anything. Yeah, I'm really excited um, about what potentially could happen in the next Secret Wars is going to be fun. 
Um, one and it always brings back to Wakanda. Wakanda is like my favorite construct of the MCU because it's just so much stuff that happens there. Mm-hmm. There's a comic book where basically T'Challa renders all vibranium, vibranium inert because he wants oh, to stop Doomsday that. Dooms from getting it. That's on the pl- table right now. Like, also, <laughs> that's really really cool. Forgot to mention on the, on the table too, adamantium uh, coming from the uh, Eternals, <laughs> the Celestial Eternal thingies. So find that out in Brave New World. Forgot about that. <laughs> but I think adamantium is melted so it can be used so maybe they figure out a way to chip off a piece of it melt it down and make mm. snicks. New Wolverine. <laughs> snicks, snicks what do you think what do you think uh but let us know what you think uh did you like deadpool and wolverine what was your most hyped thing from san diego comic-con let us know at infinite underscore pods on instagram or x gonna give it to you um, we always love interacting with you guys, the, the people. There we go. Thank you, Bane. Uh, <laughs> just having a good time making this nerdy world even more nerdy. Because let's face it, it's fun to talk about nerdy things like that and ignore what's going on in the real world. <laughs> yeah, I got to find me another screen and go see Deadpool again. Yeah, I got to find, find me a screen. Hmm, what's this phone in front of me? Just watch it on TikTok. It used to be easier to go to movies. Uh now it's hard. It's hard, <laughs> real hard. Uh, but we'll be, uh, we'll be back on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when you're listening, talking about Hot D, the penultimate episode, getting ready for the finale this week. We'll also get you ready about what's to come in the DCU front, a.k.a. Batman, the Caped Crusader, which I've heard okay reviews about so far. Yeah, no, so I had to watch this 100% so far on Rotten Tomatoes. So, so if you like the animated series, get ready, but it's going to be a little different. And not the same thing, just to let you know. <laughs> dark. Dark. Very gritty. Dark. Batman. Batman. But we hope you have a great week until then. And as always, my name is Hoodie. And I'm Kevin. And you've officially listened to this San Diego filled episode of what, Kev? <laughs> Crisis. <laughs> on. Infinite Podcast. Baby knife.